And are you ready to sacrifice? Are you ready to sacrifice? You think he's a much, much that? misunderstood guy uh, who you, actually you, deserves to take are, it all. Are, are, are you ready to sacrifice us all, including our own children? Uh, a lot of my family have fought in wars. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to sacrifice them for Ukraine? So, despite being diametrically politically opposed to one another, we finally have two of YouTube's geopolitical big dogs, depending on your perspective, somewhat locking horns. These two know each other fairly well and have prior history. The original interview is well over an hour long and definitely worth a watch, time allowing. Though, with Morgan repeating many of the very same old, now exhaustive arguments, tropes and narratives, we have condensed the video down to approximately 10 minutes, focusing predominantly on Galloway's major talking points. As you'd expect of these two, it gets a little rumbustious towards the end, yet still relatively composed. So let us observe. And he joins me in the studio now. George, good to see you. Pleasure. Been a while. Well, glad we're both still here. <laughs> I personally believe that uh, when history comes to be written, just as it was written over the Holocaust in the late 30s and 40s, those that turned their faces away from mass slaughter, even though they must have known that it was going on, have not emerged well from history. And I think the same will be true over this. I mean this respectfully, that this was the biggest single day of slaughter is part of the problem. The lives, the blood of Palestinians is oftentimes by commentators and politicians regarded as less valuable than the blood of Israelis. All the blood is a disgrace, all of it. Mm. The idea that Russia is going to allow uh, American missiles masquerading as NATO missiles Two NATO is a defensive organization. Tell that is... to the birds. Tell well, that to the people of Libya. Why Tell do you that think, why do you the think people so of many, Yugoslavia. Why do you think... Is it important to stick to the facts? The facts are these. Russia was promised, Gorbachev was promised, by the United States, by James Baker, mm. the Secretary of State, to George Bush one, that if the Red Army left eastern Germany... NATO would not expand one inch to the east of Germany. They have expanded thousands of kilometers to the east of Germany, and they now have nuclear missiles within two minutes of hitting St. Petersburg. You're not answering my question. Why have these, why have these former countries, part of the old Russian Empire, mm. why have they been so keen to join an alliance which is a defensive alliance. It's not because they want to be aggressive you to know, Russia. It isn't a, it's because a they want to be defended they, when Russia almost if, inevitably attacks them. If they're defensive, why did they bombard uh, Belgrade for 90 days? If they're defensive, why are there ships sailing in the South China Sea as far away from the North Atlantic mm. as it's possible for a NATO warship to be? You, here's the thing, George. Why do you trust Vladimir Putin? Well, I, I trust him more than I trust Keir Starmer. Really? Yeah. I you, trust, tr you trust Vladimir I, Putin I trust him more, more than Keir Starmer? I trust him more than I trust Joe Biden. I trust him more than I trust Donald oh, Trump. Hang on, hang on. Hold you, on, let me finish the statement. I can't really get past I, Starmer. You no, would trust well, easily, Vladimir easily. Putin I'd, more I, than Keir Starmer? I, I wouldn't trust any of them if they told me what day it was today without checking. I don't trust automatically any politician. I check the facts. Can How the could people... I go there? I'd be killed if I well, went I there. I have been there. I'd be killed I've by... I've been to the yeah, site of that because you're his friend. It's because you're not, chilling his... for him. I'm not his friend. Zelensky would have me killed if I went there. I am absolutely certain. By the way, there are Nazis here. There are Nazis in Germany. Yeah, but we don't there have Nazis streets. In we, we don't call streets after them. No, but you're, we you're... don't build monuments to them. But George, how we don't can you... call universities after but them. You cannot, there's there's, you cannot there's a serious... cult of Nazism. There's also a cult of 458. Ribbons, they were, you've got somebody speaking in your I have, ear. Because I said uh, I thought it was yeah, about 400. Yeah. You can have a war if you like. You can send your sons, you'll never send mine. Uh, to go and fight for which side of a I line understand, but to be clear, you would be let him keep when what he's, he's been in four countries. But your idea of negotiation years. is to let him look. I don't want to be disrespectful, but what part of you is so naive, George, that you think that Putin, having done it in Crimea and now done it in the Donbass in the east of Ukraine and got what he wanted, got what he took with force? 
that he's going to stop there and not want the rest of Ukraine? Well, he's the one who was ready to negotiate and uh, at Istanbul, two months... No, into, he wasn't. Two months into the war. Yes, he was. He could negotiate You're, this tomorrow. No, look, Boris Johnson was sent specifically to scupper the outcome of the Istanbul negotiations two months into the war, long before hundreds of thousands of people had died and hundreds, uh, thousands of square kilometres... Why would you trust Putin? Well, I don't trust people I have to negotiate with. I have to negotiate with people or fight them. I don't want to fight the Russians. I don't want to fight the Chinese. Apart from anything else, we're in no position to fight either. What happens if he decides he wants uh, a piece of the UK? Well, my goodness, the state of the UK, it would be exceedingly unlikely that he'd want to... But what if he does? What if he sniffs a bit of weakness? uh, What if he hears you and Nigel Farage and thinks, wow, British politicians seem really bang up for me at the moment? Honestly, fantasy talk. Appears. I'm is surprised it? at you. It's unbecoming. Is it you. fantasy tool? It is. Uh, right. The, you don't think Putin's a I fascist? I think people waving uh, swastikas, we should believe them. Mm. When what they about show, ruthless when Russian they, dictators? When they, when they show you the SS insignia, we should uh, believe them. And Your I- former pal, Donald Trump, mm. is going to end this war in a month. How if do you it's think he's going to do that? On, because you're going to withdraw support for the man you think is I bet a he doesn't, hero. I bet he doesn't do that. Well, We'll come back in December. As with all, we'll as come with back all, in February. And as with all things, Trump actually judge him on what he actually does, not what he says from time to time. Mm. Is my best advice on that. Mm. I don't think he'll he'll look like he wants to give Putin. If the war doesn't end before, it will end after Trump takes office. Who's going to win the U.S. election? Donald Trump by a landslide. Do you think so? Uh, by a landslide, yeah. unless they rig it, uh, unless Trump is stopped with extreme prejudice. He's on a roll that can't be stopped. A better question is, who will the Democratic opponent be? Right. Uh, Should they get rid of Biden before it's too well, late? Well, if his trousers fall down in the presidential debate... Which they might. And they might, and it might not be a pretty sight, one way or another. Mm. Uh, they might uh, ditch him, but it's getting late in the day. Operation. The problem is, George, right. he'll be watching this interview, I'm sure, Vladimir Putin, and he'll have already heard you say that, yeah, if, if you invade stuff like Crimea and the Donbass, you get to keep it. And he'll be thinking, why can't I do if the that people in the vote UK? For it. No, if the people vote for it... That's the I problem mean, with appeasing dictators. Uh, no, but he's not a dictator. He's, he's a dictator. He's got a better mandate from the people than Rishi Sunak. Never faced why a do you, vote. Why do you think that is? But Rishi Sunak's never been voted by Rishi anybody. Rishi Sunak doesn't kill and imprison his political opponents. Well, ask Julian Assange, who nearly died. Mm. Well, who, who was killing him? Rishi Sunak? The British government nearly killed Julian Assange mm. because he was a journalist and a troublemaker for mm. the powerful, for the establishment, because he revealed truths about the conflict that you and I, I think, quite gallantly opposed. He revealed truths that mm. our leaders don't want us to know. If you think our governments don't kill anybody, you need to listen to Donald Trump's uh, interview with Leslie Stahl, in which he said, we've killed a lot of people. Of course. Including our own president. Of course the Americans are killed. So uh, you're not doing our country or yourself any favours by imagining or pretending to imagine that Putin doesn't fully represent the Russian people. He does. Oh, no. And the more we're at war with them, the more he will. Don't, I do not underestimate his ability to terrorise his people into devoted slavery. 136 because you know million what? people have been terrorised into you, voting. If you go out and Putin. protest in the streets of Russia against Putin, what happens well, to you? that just isn't true. What happens to you? There's more opposition to the Russian government in Russia than there is opposition to the British and American governments in Britain and so America. You, you would... All that matters is that he is the president of a nuclear-armed superpower, the fourth biggest economy in the world, the largest country in the world, better to deal with them than to constantly uh, wave uh, swords mm. at them that are, in any case, woefully did insufficient Did you ever get bullied at school? To fight, yes. What did you do with the bully? I fought them back. Exactly. <clears throat> punch him in the nose. Yeah. Exactly. Are you going to, are you going to punch uh, Russia in the nose? I think we should stand you and, you very and strongly. You and whose army? Uh, NATO, actually, oh. which is a much bigger army than his. So are we off to war then? Where? Are we off to war in the Ukraine? One thing, well, we're, in, we're in 
war in Ukraine. I'm glad you've acknowledged that. Well, we are in the That's sense what of... Russia's been saying and the West has well, been we are denying. supplying the weaponry they're using. Yeah, you're right. To, we're in the to war. Me, to me, we're, we're in, the in this war, right? You've acknowledged it. And, we're, and we're, the you've acknowledged it. We're different... at war with Russia. Well... Let's see how we get on with that. We are supplying the weapons for Ukraine to wage its war. I think you'll right? find when you wind this back I... that you said we're in the war. Well, we are. We you're, are. You were telling the I truth. I don't think you can we're argue. In, we're in the war. Yeah. And let's see how I, it, uh, I believe we are helping defend ends. a democratic, yeah. sovereign country. And are you ready to sacrifice? Dictator. Are you ready to sacrifice? You think he's a much, for much that? misunderstood guy uh, who you, actually you, deserves to take are, it all. Are, are, are you ready to sacrifice us all, including our own children? Uh, a lot of my family have fought in wars. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to sacrifice them for Ukraine? Uh, I'm more worried about whether my kids have to end up being conscripted if Russia attacks us, mm. which they might do if they sense that we are weak. Uh, and right now, they're hearing a lot of political leaders like you and think, Nigel Farage, who are sounding uh, remarkably pro-Putin. Well, I'm just pro-peace. I'm against That's war. That's not pro-peace. I'm against war. Against war? And this is one of... This is your Russian mate invading Ukraine. Especially against nuclear war. Because then, neither us, nor our lineage, nor anyone else's lineage, no uh, cell of our being will exist.